Hey, it's Mike. Welcome back to the Mystic Smoker Shop. Uh, it's been kind of busy in the shop. It's been a while since I've uh, uploaded a video, so I figured I would go ahead and uh, get another video out, or at least a video out, on uh, one of the latest uh, products that we have on the mysticsmokers.com website, uh, and that's the collector. Uh, I've been wanting to do a collector kit for a long time and haven't really found the best way that I know of, or, or I couldn't think of a, a really best way to, to join them that uh, guys could do on the work table, get them tacked up and then attach them to the tank. Uh, a lot like we do in the firebox joinery video, you know, where we tack it to the tank and then use a marker to mark our rectangle out, stick it up there, um, uh, get all those marks done and then cut the hole and then, and then of course slide it in. And that's exactly what I've always wanted to do with a collector kit and just couldn't quite figure out or it didn't occur to me uh, how to get the uh, the joinery and the parts right and the geometry and the parts right and all that business. It turned out it was a lot more complex than I was originally thinking it was going to do. But anyway, I finally got it done. Um, and this is uh, my latest version of the collector kit, which I like. And that's what we're gonna do now, uh, is put the collector kit together and then mount it to the tank. A lot of guys are asking, well, Mike, we already have a collector uh, video out there. You're right, uh, but that is making the whole thing from scratch. And uh, although that, that works great, using the templates and all, holy smokes, this is a uh, whole lot quicker um, and easier. And uh, it kind of makes that older method antiquated, uh, in my opinion. So let's walk through what we have here. We have two uh, sides. And if you notice, I have little uh, locking tabs. There are... Um, single locking tab on the base plate here and the top plate here. Obviously the top plate has the, the hole for the stack and uh, the base plate, the, the stack will actually sit on it. Uh, and then the, the two walls have a double uh, set of tabs that the, um, uh, the, the base will, will sit into and perfectly lock these pieces in place or at least position them so that uh, all you've got to do is get it 90 degrees, tack it here, tack it there, and then uh, tack it on the other side, and then, and then basically build that up. And that's what we're gonna do uh, in the video here in just a minute. Uh, the first one that I did here literally took me less than five minutes to uh, tack it up, which compares to uh, just about a full day's work uh, of putting a collector on, on, on a tank like that one over there, I know you can't see it here, but uh, building the collector manually uh, or from scratch uh, versus, holy smokes, getting this thing tacked up uh, in just a matter of minutes. So uh, this, uh, look at this and, and see how it's going to work. This is the first one that I have attached, so uh, we're going through it for the first time. When we tack the collector up, it's gonna look like, like this. Obviously that's where it's tacked together and the scheduled pin six inch pipe slips right down in there perfectly. Um, there are bevels on these walls right here, which I, I do that bevel for you, um, that allow uh, one eighth of an inch of reveal on the walls so that you can weld a perfect weld, uh, outside corner weld, which is the, the easiest weld that there is. Uh, to the pipe coming down and seal and then of course there's room to weld it around here and if you want to take a grinder uh, grinder slash sander sanding disc and pull that in a little tighter to make it cleaner later on uh, I left plenty of meat out there for for guys to weld on I could have brought it in a little bit uh, closer but decided that uh, uh, you know it only takes a couple of minutes if somebody wants to sand that down with a, a angle grinder and a sanding disc so they can they can do whatever they want, and if uh, you know novice beginning welders or novice welders need, need a little more room, then you know that's there to uh, do that. Uh, the kit is um, designed around Schedule 10 pipe, and the reason for that is uh, Schedule 10 pipe is Schedule 10 pipe, uh, or at least it should be wherever you buy it. Uh, the the di outside diameter of this pipe is six and five eighths. The eight inch version, which looks exactly the same, it's just bigger, uh, is eight and five eighths OD, outside diameter. 
Uh, and that should be the same if you buy it here in Georgia or if you buy it over in California. Schedule 10 pipe should be Schedule 10 pipe. And uh, getting the geometry again to where all of these parts meet right here, uh, it looks simple, but uh, uh, holy smokes, it, it wasn't. And uh, I'm tickled to death with, that I finally got it right. Or at least I think I got it right because we haven't put it on here yet. Uh, and also getting the distance, uh, what I call standoff distance from the tank head, uh, which is the cap right there, to the stack uh, it was a little bit um, uh, tricky and took a, a couple of iterations of, of this to get it done. And you know, if you change this distance, it changes the angles and, and all of that business. So uh, it is 22 inches from outside to outside. So that's going to bring us out in here, which is going to cover. Uh, a 250 gallon or 30 inch diameter gallon tank just right. Now I get the question all the time, um, really frequently, uh, why do we even need a collector? Well you don't have to have a collector, obviously you could run an elbow coming out of here, you can put you a hole here, you can put a hole there, uh, but one thing that we want to understand is that um, the collector reduces turbulence. Uh, by reducing uh, the areas that are prone to create eddies in a fluid flow, which air in our case is a fluid, uh, or air is a fluid. Uh, so wherever there is a sharp corner, like the if you, we were to cut a hole here and put a elbow coming up uh, right there at that sharp corner, when that air flows around the corner, it's going to create a little whirlpool or an eddy, and an eddy, of course, is uh, a little whirlpool where the, the direction of flow is counter to the flow of the air. So basically, it's like having a little brake right there, a little set of brakes that wants to slow your air down coming in, or at least restrict the free flow of air coming in. Uh, if you put the pipe here, then obviously you have sharp corners as well. Uh, and what a collector does is it, is it reduces as much as we can uh, those sharp corners and, and basically creates a nice funnel coming into uh, the stack itself. And obviously the, the pipe when we finish this uh, will not be rounded all the way down here. We will put a mark here, put a mark there, pull it back out and cut this whole area out. So the air will come in here hit that back wall or even come in and, and have all the opportunity to start turning and coming up here. Now you may be asking, well Mike there's a sharp corner right there. Yes there is. Uh, and there's not a whole lot we can do about that without making some very elaborate changes to this, which I, I will probably do uh, on one of my next tanks that I build. And I'm going to put a little ramp right here that kind of curves that. And we'll do some testing uh, and see if that actually makes any difference. Don't know that it does or not. Uh, don't know that it will or not, but, but we'll see. Uh, and we'll actually use a, a little meter that we'll put on top of, um, on top of the stack. Uh, basically, it's a computer fan with an uh, electric uh, voltmeter that I can measure the, the micro voltage coming off of it. And, uh, you know, we can measure... Uh, and, and compare the, the voltage that I'm getting off one and the other and, and see if it's actually a stronger stream coming out. But that's another video down the road, but uh, so that is in a nutshell, I know that was a, a pretty big nutshell, uh, a lot bigger than it intended to be in at least this section of what we're going to be doing. So let me gather all of these parts up and uh, get them over to the, uh, the work table there and we'll get to tacking this up and then bring it over uh, to the tank and put it on. Now you may ask, well Mike, why don't you just put that one on there? Um, this, this kit right here, um, I made just a little bit too short. So uh, this was like version number three or four, I forget. And uh, I wanted to get this standoff a little bit further. So uh, the standoff on this one, obviously, is a lot deeper than the standoff on this one. So this one will give me uh, two and a half inches of standoff and this one came down to about three quarters of an inch of standoff, which is, uh, in my opinion, really too close. I, I want about two inches 
Uh, my smokers are, are generally around one and a half to one and three quarters. Uh, I know some people uh, will put their pipe way out here. I don't see any benefit of doing that. Somebody may be able to convince me that there is some benefit from that. I, I really don't know that there would be. Um, obviously, that that is the analogy. There would be a you know a shallow funnel versus a real long deep funnel, uh, and I don't see that that one would have any advantage over the other, other than. Um, you know, air has weight, and the further away you get, um, means that, that we have to pull that weight a little bit further. And in, in our stack, the uh, power from our stack, which our stack is the engine of this whole machine, uh, is a weak power, that vacuum. Uh, so wherever I can preserve it and make it a, uh, a shorter distance there, but still, uh, at least in my mind, reducing as much drag as we can there, then I want to take advantage of that everywhere that we can. So again, uh, let me get over to the table and we'll start putting this unit together. Okay, so we've got our parts in place and uh, we're ready to start tacking this up. And essentially all I'm going to do is um, take, the, uh, take one of the sides, doesn't matter which, we've got the base clamp down so it's not going to be wandering around on us. Uh, slip it in, hold it up tight where we're, uh, we're all the way up into that gap right there. Going to use a small uh, square to uh, make sure that it is uh, 90 degrees to the table, or at least 90 degrees to this piece. And then we'll put a tack here and a tack there. Obviously, uh, those tacks are going to pull it in just a little bit. Uh, so this runs some real small tacks so that we can just bump it back out uh, we'll do the other side and then flip it over and put some tacks on the outside and that'll hold everything steady. Uh, at that point, if you want to come back in and, and increase the size of those tacks just to keep everything uh, nice and solid, then, then that's probably a good idea. So, um, let me go ahead and, and start getting these tacks in place. Now this is quarter inch materials, quarter inch P and, uh, P and O pickled and old. Um, it's it, it's incredibly nice material uh, and it is weld ready when you get it now notice that there are these bevels that i talked about and that's what uh, the bevel goes down halfway on this quarter inch material leaving i don't know maybe not quite halfway maybe leaving three thirty seconds or uh, one eighth right there and that will fit uh, perfectly up against that uh that stack pipe right there so it just makes things a little more refined uh, and, and a lot nicer in my opinion. So let's go ahead and put those tacks on. side make sure you get your bevel to the inside uh, again a little tack discipline that's an, another reason that we use small tacks uh, and always resist the urge to uh, put a big well down there because uh, you may get to a later step and then figure out that oh crap uh, I've got to pull it back apart because I put something together wrong okay. perfect tiny little tacks that off, check my square, just a tiny bit. That is nice. All right, let's slip the top piece on. Look at that, that is very, very, very nice. And I'm gonna slip this in just to make sure everything is lining up right. Uh, and this is just a, a cut off a blank of the Schedule 10 pipe, of course. That looks really nice. Good. 
all of our all of our seams are nice and tight. All of our corners are nice and tight. And of course, that uh, uh, is a going to be ultimately a uh, open corner weld, which is one of the easiest welds that there are. So uh, even the beginner or, or novice welders are, are going to have a uh, a nice corner, open corner weld to deal with there. Um, these. Once we tack it up, on the, I'm going to put a couple more tacks on the inside and get it nice and firm. But uh, once we get uh, finished tacking it up and we're sure this is what we want, I'm going to uh, take the angle grinder, the four and a half inch angle grinder with a thin cutting disc on it, and we'll just nib these off. Uh, nib them off even with the top of the surface there so that we have a nice, smooth, open corner that we can run from the top all the way down to the bottom. Uh, and that's going to be about an easy weld that you can run. Uh, and if you set it up uh, like this on a, a, you know, essentially 45 degrees, then you can run down in that direction or even prop it so it's even easier and uh, come downhill like this and uh, make a very nice weld. And if you're like me, uh, if you weld like me, you will probably want to. Uh, sand that over, grind to sand that over, but uh, a lot of these guys that, that weld day in day out, um, they will probably uh, show their welds off and, and leave them open. But um, that corner is going to uh, provide plenty of, of uh, welding surface there and you will have enough that you can grind that over and make it smooth. Particularly when uh, you put some stitch welds on the inside in here to, uh, to help stiffen everything up even more. So uh, next step is to take it over, I'll, I'll do this some more tacks, and I'm going to take it over to the uh, tank and we'll get it spaced up to the right height and tack it to the tank and then we'll worry about making our marks on the tank to, uh, to cut our rectangle out to slip this into. And it's going to slip in uh, up to these pieces right here. This piece hangs out uh, probably about 3 eighths, maybe a little bit closer to a half inch. Uh, this will actually go inside the tank. The tank will come to about here, uh, which is where I've estimated uh, how far in this is going to go on uh, an elliptical tank. Um, a hemispherical tank will take a little deeper collector uh, because that, that deep hemispherical tank will come all the way up in here. And I don't know if I'll actually have to make a different collector kit for the, the hemispherical tank at this point. Uh, or if this one will work and it's just going to get us down a little bit closer. I'll know more about that uh, in, in the next few days as I start working on that version. So uh, let me move to the next step and I'll be right back. Okay, it's time to set the collector up against the tank and, and get it in the position where we want to start tacking it on uh, so that we can draw our line. I've got it roughly spaced up, I think, to where it needs to be. We'll have to check that in just a second. Um, my, my table works out great. Um, coincidentally, it just happens to be just about the right height. Put the little plastic box underneath it and then shimmed it up with uh, two pieces of uh, eighth inch material. Looks to be pretty darn close uh, if I just eyeball the center line in there. So I've got a, a good center line here we remember from our layout lines, I always put the uh, crosshair center lines across. The tank is clocked to exactly 12 o'clock, it's straight up and down, uh, so, so that is good. And the, the tank is locked down with my micro adjust on the other side. If uh, you haven't seen the video on the, the build tables yet, uh, that's probably a good idea to do that. It, it makes a huge difference on your builds, uh, it, it being easier to do stuff like that. So I can move this table just a degree or two either way just by turning the little nut um, and it's real easy real easy to build so anyway uh, the table the uh, tank is clocked to exactly 12 o'clock and straight up and down and I want to make sure that I am the same distance off on either side and I've lined my center line up with this center line I, I have split this distance in half and drawn me a little line there. So that is two and three quarters and that is a bit more. So that is the same on 
on either side. So good. We're um, we're pretty darn straight, which is going to be good enough for right now, right? Because all we're doing is drawing the uh, rectangular hole that this is going to slip into. So once we get it tacked on there, then we can fine tune just a little bit more. Uh, next thing we need to do is make sure that since the tank is straight up and down, we need to make sure that the, the table is right. Um, I don't know that my concrete floor is going to be exactly what we want it to be, so let's see. Nope, we're uh, uh, four and a half tenths of a degree up. And it looks like it's going to be up high on this side. So, if I'm not mistaken, this side needs to come up. Yep. So we'll try a piece of eighth inch material. Can't use that one because we're going to use this later. We'll use this piece of scrap. And eighth inch is way too much. We went the other way. Let's try a piece of scrap paper. And that's uh, half a degree. I can live with that. And in this direction, we need to come down in the front, which is up in the back. Uh, so let me grab a sheet of paper and we'll actually put something back there. I'm going to put that right there. Let's see what that does. Closer. Not quite thick enough. Oh, that's pretty darn good right there. And I, I just would recommend taking my time and getting it right. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. We are within a half a degree there. And we are bouncing between one tenth and a half a degree, half a degree there. So I say we nail it right there. Stable right there. I'm happy with that. So, what we want to do now is draw our rectangle. And just like we do for the uh, firebox joinery video, um, I have my little stick, my little flat stick. It's just a, a little quarter by one half piece of flat stick. And I've taken a piece of uh, soapstone and ground it to where it, the point is even with the back of that stick. That means that my point is going to be even with the top of this box, and that's what we need. We don't want a point that comes to the center because then we'll be adding an, an eighth or whatever the, the thickness of that happens to be. So make sure that your little soapstone rides even with the top of, uh, of your surface here, which it is, and just ride gently across. Put your mark. And that worked out real good. So the dilemma becomes now, how do we do this mark right here? We need to be exactly 90 degrees off of this, perpendicular with this line right here, and we need to be uh, exactly flush with that edge right there because this is going to sit all the way in and contact our tank there. 
actually the center will actually go inside that uh, little radius right there. But anyway, we need to draw that line right there. And I've tried a couple of different ways, making a little jig that turns this into 90 degrees and hold this, but it, it gets kind of fidgety and you have to maintain up against that edge right there and maintain this 90 degrees as well. While this stick, I'm going to exaggerate here, because of this outward radius here, uh, the stick needs to come out and then go back in, right? And that gets real fidgety trying to hold it up against uh, my little stick. But that idea didn't work out. Um, I think the, the best thing to do is uh, just eyeball it because it's really easy to keep my 90 degrees if I look straight down on it and slide that thing back and forth uh, as it needs to go. And that was pretty easy. I'm coming back up and just double checking my line. And that looks pretty good. So I ran across it twice. Of course, I wasn't watching this. I was watching right here to make sure that I stayed up against it and make sure I stayed 90 degrees. And darn if both of my lines didn't end up right on top of each other. So I think that's probably going to be the way to go. Somebody will have a better idea, I'm sure, and uh, put it in the comments below. Uh, but what I'm going to do in this case is cut just a little bit to the inside of that line so that um, if I, I, I would rather trim some away than have to, to fill it in, especially on the first one or two of these until I, I get pretty confident about what, I do, what I'm doing. Now this cut right here will be fairly easy. I am going to cut just a little bit below that line, probably uh, uh, 3 sixteenths or so below that line uh, on my first cut. And then after everything turns out, uh, every, after everything is cut, I will uh, come back and cut my final line. And the reason I do that is these, these tank heads, a lot of them will have a lot of tension in them. Uh, you can see where this one really got, uh, you can see the, the uh, forming marks on it right here. I don't know if you can see that or not from the video, but you can see a line going right here. And that's the forming marks where this thing was pushed down in a die uh, to, uh, to make that curve there. Obviously it was a flat, round piece of uh, quarter inch plate to start with, and then they shoved it down in that die. So anyway, it's got a lot of stress on it and, and who knows how tight they had to squeeze it to get it to come down to the tank before they welded it on. My point is sometimes these things you cut the hole and the hole stays exactly where you have it. So you'll end up with a perfect rectangle. Sometimes, however, you'll cut this hole and you'll get just over towards the edge and this piece will kind of come out a little bit. Uh, and what that does is rather than you having a nice straight line across here, now this line rises up because this has come out. Uh, so you'll be flush over here, flush over here, and you'll have an eighth to maybe three sixteenths gap right here in our center. So what I like to do is, um, particularly if I've already got the piece made, uh, that needs to go in there so my hole needs to be right is I make the hole just a little bit small and then I work my way back to it because uh, once you get that cut, that first cut, it's pretty much relaxed where it's going to be. So uh, I'll go ahead and put the mark on the bottom. Remember I've got my, my little wedge that comes up here, wedge marker, uh, even with the top. So I'm feeling down there to make sure and I'm looking to make sure my soapstone is riding the way it's supposed to and I'm just going to work my way out that Staying nice and flush. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to draw this line. Looks pretty good.
right, so all of that talk about the end cap flexing out uh, on this particular paint, paint was for nothing because it, it didn't flex. It stayed exactly where it was supposed to stay. It's not that often that it happens, but if it does, it can sure enough change, uh, change the, the, the opening size there by, you know, probably 3 sixteenths or, or heck even a quarter of an inch. I've seen it happen. Uh, I had one one time that sprung so much it even knocked the grinder back and almost knocked it out of my hand. So uh, just know that that can happen. So I'm always make one cut just a little bit to the inside in case I, I need that extra room. I can go back and, uh, and you know, shape it up to where it's a perfect rectangle again. A uh, little tidbit about these pieces of scrap here. Don't throw these away. I can't tell you how many times guys call me and say, Mike, what am I going to do? I, I screwed up and I shifted my collector up and uh, my hole's in the wrong spot or, you know, when I cut it, the, the thing's not, you know, whatever. Uh, save these pieces and if you need to tack it back in there and then redraw and then go back and weld, uh, you know, that would be worst case scenario. You, you could get that done and, and I could make it where you never even knew that that was cut out. Uh, a lot of guys will cut this too long. Uh, or change plans or, or for whatever reason and they need that strip right there which isn't a piece of flat bar right because it's compound curve then all you've got to do is trim this off tack it in there weld it grind it and uh, sand it and then you never even know it was there so long story short don't get rid of these pieces I can't tell you how many times they've come in handy uh, for guys that have uh, uh, even paid for me I'm, I'm not gonna charge you for anything like that but I have several out there and if you need one I'll send the thing to you pay the shipping uh, it has uh, saved a lot of guys bacon. Fortunately, I haven't had to use one yet, knock on some wood, but uh, you know, <laughs> it could happen. There's a, a dimple right there. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I'm putting the gauge right in that dimple. Make sure that I have it straight, and it is. Yep. And I need to go that way just a tad. Darn good. All right, so here's the moment of truth. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it turns out. I, uh, I did go ahead and trim with a, the sanding disc, uh, of course, the four and a half inch grinder. A lot of people say, Mike, what are you talking about when you say sanding disc? The typical four and a half inch grinder uh, with a plastic pad on the back of it and uh, the sanding disc and I, I go through these sanding discs like crazy so uh, my favorite is the 36 and for finer work uh, that is 60 and that should be 80 yes that's 80 and I have 100 and 120 in there uh, for uh, smoothing up real good but anyway take a uh, what I did was I took this the sanding disc and when I made this cut it went in 90 degrees to this surface. Well, I really don't want that because we want our piece to fit in that hole, which means it needs to be in this angle, 90 degrees going that way, not 90 degrees coming here. So all I did was take the uh, sanding disc and, and trim the back of that back. Probably should have waited until I test fit it because um, you know you don't want to get rid of more meat than you than you need to, but. Um, I guess I got excited and wanted to go a little bit quicker and got ahead of myself. But we'll cross our fingers and hope that I didn't need too much. Uh, I'm not past our lines, so uh, I'm fairly confident with that. And it should slide up and hit that wall and stop. And wow, look at that. It, it, uh, that is really nice. Let me grab that camera and show that to you. Let's look at that corner joint. 
That is pretty darn nice. I like that. Seam across the top looks good. And this side over here looks real good. Bump that in. It got bumped out. Yep, that's a that's an easy weld. What we'll do is put these stitch welds here in, and then I will take the plasma cutter, or of course you can use a torch, and I'll cut this plate on the inside, just the other side of those welds, uh, so that we have a nice air transition coming across there. Because remember, right now the back side of this is straight. Uh, because I don't know, uh, I can't put that curve in there because I don't know what other people's uh, caps are going to be like. None of these are exactly the same. So that's why we cut the hole, slide it in, weld it up, and then cut the excess off. All right, we're back on the workbench now, and uh, we've, got, we've got everything on the tank handle that needs to be handled, and a, another convenience of... Uh, building this thing on the work table is that we can measure this or at least mark this stack and, and get the, the slot cut out of it while we're up here rather than having to do that on the, uh, the tank itself. So what we need to do is mark this rascal uh, where we want to cut it. Now uh, obviously we want to come just inside probably about 3 eighths, half inch, whatever you want to do. Uh, on the inside of this right here because we're going to put a bead right down here so I'm going to put a mark there uh, put a corresponding mark on the other side and I'm going to put a uh, small mark right here and that's going to tell me where I want to make my cut so on the inside of this, I'm gonna make that cut. So basically it's gonna overlap this about a quarter of an inch. And that's not gonna be sticking out to cause us some turbulence right there because remember we beveled that there. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could even go in and smooth that, but I, I don't think that that's gonna be an issue. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, probably a quarter or a three eighths inside, um, inside our bevel here so that I have plenty of room to, uh, to cut that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is mark the height. Well, we could uh, just mark around here and go down a quarter of an inch, but why not just put our marker in here and work our way around. And we can even spin this spin this thing to where we can get it all the way around to where we need it. And that's looking pretty good up in there. I'm right, right up in the corner. So I'll want to come down, I don't know, probably an eighth inch on this line. Cut the bottom of the line would probably be a good thing to do. So I'm gonna give me a reminder uh, X to come down there. I want to cut on the inside. If I don't do that, I'll forget. That's just the way that I've always done it. And I'm going to extend my mark here. Go ahead and put me a dash line. That's the one that I want to cut. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight right now because you know, we're straighten it up with a straight edge here. But before I forget, and I have done that before, I want to go ahead and put my line in there. Could even mark that one away so I don't accidentally cut it. And those kinds of things do happen. It may seem like overkill, but uh, you know, you get busy, you get distracted, you come back, and uh, you cut the wrong spot. So I think I'm going to put a mark across here too, just to remind me that I'm going to be cutting the bottom side of that because I'm likely to forget. All right, let me get set up to, uh, to cut that. And what I generally do is, is clamp it down on the table right here and just use the side cutter or the uh, uh, grinder, the angle grinder to do that. So let me get set up and we'll go ahead and start cutting that.
Okay, let's see what kind of fit we have. Let's see. Boy, that slips down in very nicely, and that looks great. Um, we've got plenty of meat to weld in this corner here, this corner here, and this looks really nice coming around, around the top. Uh, this is coming around, I'll grab the camera, look inside. Boy, that looks, that looks very, very nice. Let me uh, grab that camera. Let the light adjust. Oh well, wow, you can see uh, there's plenty of room to put some stitch welds here, here, and, and there. And I would even stitch uh, around in there. Of course, that will have to be done from inside the tank. Remember, after the, uh, the collector is mounted and just about the last stage of this build series. So we will do all of this later, but we're going to have plenty of nice area to do that there. Uh, another nice feature of having these bevels here is that weld right here will be shielded uh, or at least uh, smoothed out um, by this, this bevel here. So that'd be a nice contour there. I don't think we would get any turbulence that, to speak of there. Uh, I have seen some of these where the guys came way out to here uh, and cut them off and had as much as an inch. Boy, that is just, that's a big no-no. Uh, you don't want to develop anything right here that can hang that air and cause little turbulence uh, little eddies in there that can cause turbulence and, and resistance to the air so uh, there's also enough room up here to put a couple of little stitches through there uh, but most of that weld will be handled uh, around here so that shouldn't be an issue at all I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out all right, so I think this is a, a good a spot as any to end this video. I've got some uh, deadlines coming up that I need to get on and, and some other projects. So I'm gonna have to push this to the side for just a few days. And I didn't want to delay the video coming out any longer than I need to because there are some guys that have these and, and would uh, probably find the, uh, the video helpful when they're, they're going through this process. So uh, there's no need in, in watching the welding up and all of that, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I am going to just just like we did before uh, use my little table here get it in position get it level make sure my tank is clocked and then put some stitch welds uh, on the inside here here and here uh, just to make sure it's locked in position before I swing it up on the side uh, and get in an optimal position so that I can do this nice pretty uh, long weld through here so that's pretty straightforward the last thing that I will do of course is put the uh, the last thing in the build process is uh, put the stack in. We don't want the stack, of course, uh, until we're done so that we can roll it over and all those things. Otherwise, the stack will hit the ground and get in the way and all that business. And that's very easy to do later on. So uh, keep in mind that uh, there are various versions of this collector. This, of course, is an elliptical head tank, head being the cap uh, or end cap. Uh, the other version is the hemispheric cap, and I'll try to find a picture of that and, and throw it in, um, throw it up on the screen so you, you can see the examples, comparison examples. But if I don't, it's the, the very rounded or bubble in elliptical versus hemispheric. Obviously, the hemispheric collector would look exactly like this. It would just need to be longer through here. So this angle will come back here. Still 22 on a 250 size or a 30 inch diameter tape. Still 22 inches here. Uh, it will, and so it'll make the exact same hole. It will just be longer so that it can reach further. Uh, the stack will still sit in, in basically the same location. It's just got to go further to get through that long end cap there. And obviously you'll have more waste on the inside to, uh, to cut off because it'll be a lot deeper cut. Uh, so, uh, if you are looking on uh, the Mystic Smokers website or, or looking at Etsy or, or some other way, make sure that you know what type you have, not just the diameter of the tank, but also the end cap, because that's going to make a difference on which, uh, which one of these collectors, uh, which one of these collector versions you order. Uh, and again, uh, keep in mind that it is uh, based on Schedule 10 pipe, which outside diameter should be exactly the same as Schedule 40 and Schedule 80, as long as it's one of those Schedule type pipes. Um, and I forget which certification that is. I, I think it's ANSE, but I, I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. 
anyway, if it is one of those, the outside diameter should be the same. So if you have uh, a schedule 40 pipe, which is, in, in my opinion, too thick, thicker than we need, uh, it's not going to hurt anything, but that's just a lot of weight uh, that's unnecessary. Uh, or Lord forbid you have a schedule 80, which is super, super thick. They should still be the exact same uh, diameter on the outside. So. Uh, let's wrap this up and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, that goes a long way in pushing this video up in the uh, YouTube video rankings and uh, helping it out, get out to more people. So uh, if you would, do those two things and I will see you in the next episode.